Okay, Jody here and on the second part of this section we are going to review one important command and all its siblings. FS check. File system check. This is used for checking the file system, especially in case of a corrupted file system. I mean broken, not corrupted as politically corrupted. Or for example, when you lose power or a bad program does something very strange on a low level mode or you have a problematic physical disk and you lost some part of your super blocks. We'll talk about it in this section. This command and its family will does a check on the whole file system to find errors or even fix them. If you try something like this, ls and check on the spin all the files which has fsck in them, you will see a group of files here. The point is when you run when you run fs check it goes see for example you say fs check slash dev sda5 it goes and sees the file system of this partition what is it for example if it is ext it goes and calls spin fs check ext3 the same method in many cases, fsck.ext something will call this e2fsk, which is the father or mother of all file ext file system checks. So, me and you will use this one. fscheck will find the type of the partition. For example, if it is fat, we'll call this one. And also, we need to know that fscheck ext3, ext2, ext4 call this one e2fsck command using it was very very easy i can say fs check dev sda1 check the f slash dev sda1 you remember that sda1 when we were working on it was a ext5 system slash dev sda5 was formatted as XFS. If needed, we can do the same. For example, I can say MKFS EXT3 on dev SDA1 created this file system. It says, do you want to proceed? Yes. So it's created it. As you can see, it says creating file system with this much blocks. Each is 4K and this much inode. So this is the most number of files I can have on this specific disk. I can configure this for a higher number or if the disk was larger, this would be higher. This is configurable. And also it writes its super block backups here, here, here and here. Super blocks are the uh, parts of the partition which contains the metadata of the files like the last change, ownership and those kind of stuff. These are locations where it is backed up so if one is broken it can use the others to repair it and always have different copies of the same thing and i can do a make fs xfs dev sda5 it says oh i cannot create it why is that because Because SDA5 contains a mounted file system. We will see mounting later, but it's like when you create a file system, you have to mount it on one uh, directory. For example, slash temp slash one. And then you can write files here and it will be here. We will see this later. But first I need to unmount it. Dev SDA5. Now it's unmounted. Now I can format it. It says it has a pre-existing file system do you want to force it i say yes and now i have a new xfs file system i can check any of them fsck dev sda1 and as you can see it checks it it says okay its state is clean these are the files there and these are the blocks there okay but let's see this one, dev sda5. It says if you wish to check the consistency of the 
XFS file system or repair a damage file system, see XFS repair. So keep in mind that whenever we want to work on a XFS file system, we will have our own XFS commands as a trick. Whenever we are speaking about XFS, you should use XFS commands. Otherwise, use the FSCK commands. So in general, FSCK goes and checks the file system for any errors and normally will fix them. Later, you will see that we have a file in another section, which is FSTAP. This shows what file system should be mounted where. For example, it tells that a file system with this UUID should be mounted on slash. This should be mounted as a VFAT here. Or for example, other ones are virtual ones. So FSTAP tells this Linux system to mount what, what file system where. You can always run FSTK-A. It goes through FSTAP and runs uh, the file system checks on all of them. Although most of them are mounted, so it's aborting them. And you know about all of these. It is important to know dash n switch do nothing. So I can do fsck dash n sda1. It tells to do nothing. Just pretend that you are going through it. Do not pretend. Go through it. Check whatever you need to check. Or, But if you found an error, never touch anything. Man fsck. As I told you many times, FSCK is a front end to other programs. So not all switches of FSCK are, uh, you are not able to see all the switches here. Because for example, if you are working on an EXT, when you say FSCK, for example, dash A, automatically fix everything slash dev sda1 which is an ext fsck will go and run the fsck ext 3 dash a blah blah this one dev and this one will go and run the e2fs check dash a blah blah this is just to make it easier so me and you will remember that we need to run fsck but for example, dash A switch, which is for automatic repair, which is not a very good idea. It's kind of a dangerous because it might do some changes that me and you are not agree with. But it's better to, if you have an error, it's better to go through all the problems one by one. So if I if you run FSCK on a file system and say FSCK slash dev SDA1 and run it, and this is not mounted, it will go through all the test if it finds an error will ask you do you want to run this fix or not yes or no and you have to push yes my history is when this happens you always say okay this one you do a search and say yes next one you do a yes next one you do a yes and suddenly there are hundreds of them and then you are just pushing yes all the time and eating your food so there is another switch a automatic fix dash i is for interactive fix and dash y is assume yes for most of the things little small differences between dash y and dash a professionals and real people use dash i i think which is the default one here Dash A, walk through etc fs tab, run on everything. Dash N, don't execute. Just show what would be done. The important switches here. Uh, other than that, you have E2 FSK. As I've told you, this is the backend which is being run for EXT file systems. MK2 EFS. It creates our file systems. We have the tune to FS. This is for the tuning EXT file systems. 
on the LPIC level, we will just use dash L option. So I can say tune to FS dash L SDA one, and it shows some detailed data about this specific file system. For example, it says this file system do have all these features, has journal, blah, blah, resize, diary index, file type, and has all of these. Revision is one, which is dynamic, file system UID, file system magic number. The state at the moment is clean, OS type is Linux, inode count, block count, and things like block per group and lots of other info which we don't know about most of them so we'll just use dash l to see them we'll never touch them there used to be a command debug fs it is still there very powerful but they have removed it from the lpic because me and you may create bigger problems by running it rather than just not knowing about it. Super blocks, I told you. And XFS tools, again, as I told you, we have file system check, four file system checks on EXTs, on FATs, and other stuff. But on EX, XFS file systems, we do have XFS tools. In most cases, XFS is not installed by default. On Debian, you may need it to, run, to install XFS progs. And then you have commands like this. For example, XFS info obviously shows some information about XFS. Shows some information about this. We have XFS repair. Goes through different phases. We'll check files and repair if something needs to be repaired. Also, we have XFS debug, which shows information or checks and debugs file system. We can even change some minor configuration, but in our real life, we never do without consulting a person who knows more than us. And at the end, we have the XFS file system reorganized. It's kind of like a defrag under windows xfs is very good with small files but time to time you need to run this if you run it without any data it does xfs file system reorganize dev sda5 mount dev sda5 and mount one oh i might have temp one see the temp one and now i can do the reorganize it goes through all the i i nodes replaces them if needed i think if i'm not wrong by default it only runs on 10 percent each time so you have to run it time to time and it takes some time or you can say run for two hours or blah blah but in general it reorganizes the files to make the performance better and the last part is repairing we've already talked about and if you are on a non-journaling file system like ext2 the fsck will show you many questions if it take a lot of time but on a journaling file systems it's much faster and on the repairing xfs check is the one you need to use when using an xfs1 dash n is the not to fix anything and just show the results. These ones went through. Razer FS also have some its, its own tools not covered in LPIC anymore. So this is the things you should know about. Have fun and whenever something bad happens for your file system, do not rely on what you learned in this session. Go deeper because you may break something. Ask for help when needed. But if it's your computer and you have backups or your server and you have backups or you want to leave the company, be brave and just run them. I have never had major issues. Have fun.